So, Frank, now is the time that, that these, this class has been prejudged. But just explain a little bit about what, what and how a breed could actually end up on the vulnerable list. Well, it's because many of the, them, they were all developed for a purpose. And when their purpose became, they were redundant for their job, they fell out of popularity. There was no need for them. But fortunately, some of them became domesticated as pets and family dogs, and that's how they're surviving. But the numbers are low, and some are really threatened with their population. We have two gun dogs. So the dogs now still being judged in the way that the judges are looking for fit for function, for health of the dog. And, and, and also looking, remembering the breed standard. They're looking for a dog of good type, which is healthy and sound and performing well. But the judge here is judging them like a variety class of show dogs, which is closest to the breed standard. The long brindled cardigan corgi bitch there the curving outline of the Dandy Dinmont, and there the very alert Kerry Blue. Now, Patsy Mullins, as I said, we expect, we think, a shortlist to be brought forward. She's quite used to this stage. All shapes and sizes, the long, the short, and the tall. And there's, there's the Bloodhound, very soft spot for the Bloodhound, the Foxhound. And look at the elegant symmetry of that. There's the Harrier, smaller versions, related, of course, to the same pack hound as the fox hound, bred originally to be followed on foot. And there, the sleek so black and tan outline, the curving outline of the English toy terrier. So 32 breeds on the vulnerable breed list in the total this year. Setter. Irish red and white setter is called forward. First of the short list. This is Tilda, two-year-old female. Out comes Tarzan, six-year-old dog, curly-coated retriever. A big winner in the, the breed, Mastiff. now the breed record holder. And coming out next is the Mastiff. That's marvellous, what used to be called the old English Mastiff. And the Welsh Corgi Cardigan. The well, Cardigan Welsh Corgi is coming next. I can see her coming. Yep. Yep. The Pembroke is the one associated with the royal family. The this one, the Cardigan. Terrier. Out comes the Celium. Marvellous, the Celium Terrier. It looks really exciting to be in. And now the Sky Terrier. And uh, the, the, the longest dog in the group, the Sky Terrier. This is a prick eared. They also come in drop eared variety. Step forward, the Bloodhound. Marvellous, a lovely silhouette, lovely balance on that Bloodhound. There, the elegance of the Greyhound. Smooth, fluent action. We also have the Otterhound to come forward, please. There's another real working type, the Otterhound. Ancient and breed. the English Toy Terrier. And the smallest that dog in the group, the English Toy Terrier. Breeds. So we have Many our shortlist. And again, just wonderful finest. variety. Amongst those who have been brought forward, but a big hand to all those that took part in this Vulnerable Breeds competition. So they've all won a best of breed at various championship shows as designated by the Kennel Club. So a great achievement to get here, and they will really have enjoyed the big ring atmosphere to get into the Crufts main arena. So now a little bit more judging to be done, and we'll get to a chance to have a, a closer look and perhaps talk a little bit more about the particulars of, of each of these breeds and so we're starting with the Irish red and white setter and this one the population first dwindled Frank right back in the earlier 20th century when the red setter became popular uh, yeah, of course this was the original Irish setter but when, once the red setter had come into popularity these declined almost extinct in the 1970s small gene pool and a small nucleus of breeders trying to keep them going. Fortunately, they're on the rise again, which is a great thing. Again, the judge will be looking for breed standard details. This clear white, pearly white background and the islands of red. It's a sturdier dog than the Irish Red Setter, more substance and a broader head. The breed standard talks about it being athletic rather than racy, and that coat should be finely textured with good feathering. 
to the curly coated retriever, another gun dog. So another gun dog here, Frank, and the hallmark of this breed is that coat of small, tight curls, which give it that waterproof quality, and that goes back to that sense of being fit for function. Yes, and it may have some water spaniel in, in its background, which used to have the curly coat. This is the tallest of the retriever breeds. Very good working gun dogs, still very popular in the trials and working. They're capacious dogs. They have to be fit for function. Big barrel ribs for swimming, for swimming and give it flotation, heart and lung room. A lovely wedge-shaped head, going really well here, striding out well, and a very happy dog wagging its tail, really enjoying itself here. A big winner, it's, a best, it's won several gun dog groups at all breed championship shows, so it's a very good one. Six years old, pet name Tarzan, which I like very much. Selection today. The so the Mastiff from the working group, popular in the arena here tonight. It can be Apricot, Fawn or Brindle. This one, Bertie, a four-year-old male. Yes, and a, a, a great challenge for breeders to get size and substance and retain soundness and athleticism. And this dog has the lot. He's a very fluent mover. What I would say, light on his feet for the size of a dog. He used to be used by gamekeepers to ward off poachers, but has a history right back to the Roman times when he was used as a guard dog and as a fighting dog, unfortunately. And almost disappeared from the UK completely when fighting pits were outlawed back in 1835. Cardigan Welsh Corgi. And this one is an import and she's a big winner in the breed, top winner in the breed for the year. The Cardigan Corgi is the longer version of the Corgi larger ears, a longer body, and it's always had a natural tail, whereas the Pembroke used to be docked. So this one, low to ground, but got ground clearance. It's able to stride out cleanly. They were bred low to ground because they had to nip at the heels of cattle to drive them on. That was their function as a droving dog. And you can just see how it'd be very well equipped for that being so low to the ground. This is Libby. Four-year-old female. And this wonderful level Three top line as she moves. Here we have the first the Celium selection. Terrier. Well, it was a really popular breed when it was first recognised by the oh, Kennel Club in 1911. But numbers terrier. have really fallen away. And I don't know whether Frank, just the upkeep of that coat, whether it has anything to do yeah, with it. It's always surprised me. I've had two Celiums in my life and had two champions in them with my, with my friend. And they were a wonderful breed, great characters. What it is, perhaps, the West Hallen White is very popular. That's got a white coat. I wonder why the Celium is not more popular. It's a lovely dog to own. Great characters. They're rectangular, sturdy, well-boned. This one, a pure white. You sometimes get them with badger markings over the eye or on the ears. They're rectangular and fairly low to ground. And this is Pops, who is a two-year-old male, an Irish and UK champion. Here now, the Sky Terrier. Long and and here the comes the Sky Terrier. Glorious double coats. One of the native breeds of Scotland, and the Sky was very influential in, make, in the ancestry of a lot of the Scottish breeds. He plays a part, his ancestry, of course. People remember the Sky Terrier and Greyfriars Bobby, the, the, the dog that pined for his owner after he died and stayed by on the graveside for years and the oak the locals fed the dog in the churchyard that was grave Ryers bobby here's the epitome of him the sky terrier the prick eared again the, the feature is to get this length of the body but also a level to a strong level top line which is showing very nicely there and this is Fergal, four-year-old dog, who we're told is a bit of a clown when he's at home with the family. Now on to the first of three shortlisted hound breeds. This, the Bloodhound. The Bloodhound, very impressive in outline. Often has that wonderful sort of soft expression, but world famous as a scent hound. Just look at those flues. It, it, can, it can go back to the, it can be traced back to the 1300s. As a hunting dog, it used to be used for chasing wounded, the, tracking the blood of wounded deer. That's hence the bloodhound. Later on, it was found that he was a very good sleuth dog for tracking criminals and poachers. That's how it got the name in Scotland of the sleuth hound. And the bloodhound is a category three 
on the breed watch, which is a kennel club's program, meaning judges are making sure there's no exaggeration, in particular, excessive uh, loose skin. And, and the breed clubs have now got a, a joint health scheme with the kennel club to get rid of exaggerations, exaggerations of skin, better eyes. So, doing, doing a good job. And here is the greyhound, this fawn greyhound, another import. What everything about the greyhound is about symmetry, a mixture of gracefulness and muscular power. And we see that in the lines. Judging sighthounds like this, the greyhound, the whippet, everything is about galloping power, symmetry, and elegance. Look at that long neck. It said about the greyhound, the head of a snake, the neck of a drake. You've got this shape of the head and the long, elegant neck. And you see the curve over its loin, that gives it muscular power for driving it forward from the hind quarters. And the handler, Robert Newsham, has been showing greyhounds at Crufts for over 50 years, owned by Elaine Newsham. This is Elena, female five-year-old. So the otter hound, a rough-coated hound. And, and this was a breed which was threatened with extinction when otter hunting was banned. And of course, all the packs had to be dispersed. Fortunately, there were some keen breeders who wanted to keep the breed going. And they got some of the stock from the Kendall hunt and the Dumfrieshire hunt. And they were very influential in keeping the breed going. And I'm so glad they did. It's an elegant, noble breed. Oily coat for waterproofing. Web feet to help it for working in the water. Everything functional and great characters. Yeah, described uh, by the owner and uh, breeder Samantha Lewis as having a real sense of humour, cheeky and lovable. Chairman, four-year-old. And now to the toy. Breed. And the final English in this bear. vulnerable breed competition, the English Rotten Toy Terrier, 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 which is the oldest of the British Rotten native toy breeds. And, and like many of the toy breeds, toy it was bred Terrier. down from a, a sporting breed. It was bred down from the Manchester Terrier. They were used to keep down vermin in the early mills, but here they were bred down into this miniature form. But it could still do a job of work. It could still acquit itself well against vermin. And look at that wonderful little extended trot. They have to go with this brisk, stretching action in front, holding the archer over its loin. That's a really nice extended trot, rather like a show pony, a good show pony, yeah. The epitome so of petite. This is Tina, four-year-old female. So a final look for our judges. So there will be a runner-up and uh, a winner awarded. Patsy Hollings having had a good look and watched so how the will be move as well. Of the British Vulnerable Breeds final. We're all moving towards it's the it's Cardigan the Corgi. The Cardigan Corgi, Corgi has Cardigan. won for Tracy Irving. Top winner in the breed for this year, for the last year. It is the four-year-old female and Libby. And look at that, the Bloodhound. What a marvellous win for the Bloodhound. <laughs> marvellous. Champel Maplemead Malazar of Quixotic. There. Well, it's Murdo, aged three years uh, old, is the, the bloodhound, handled tonight. by the owner, Lorraine Priestley, but it is the Welsh Corgi, That's the cardigan, Tracy Irving the Welsh and, and Libby. Corgi. And a very happy Libby, by the looks this of it, promised champion. a treat, I think. Well, we're told she does love her toys, <laughs> loves nothing more than throwing it around, even when she's waiting to be yes. judged. I think she showed a little bit more discipline than that today. You see that beautiful outline, the long, level back. Lovely out, and then there, it, there is the bloodhound, noble head. He looks very unfussed uh, by what's uh, happening around him. A very him. wise, <laughs> dignified expression. Yeah. A worthy winner and a notable runner-up as well. So winner of the Vulnerable Breeds Competition 2023, and it just puts a spotlight on those dogs that are dwindling in numbers. Uh, uh, and, uh, which could would, could use new interest in the breed, yes.